The most common reason why you need to change the heat block on your 3D printer is a stripped nozzle thread. If you change nozzles pretty regularly like me, then eventually you're going to wear out the threads in the aluminium heat blocks that are supplied with most low budget 3D printers. The new parts are not expensive and replacing your heat block can be done quickly and safely if you follow these steps. If you'd rather just change the whole hot end then I have a video linked here and down in the description. Changing the whole hot end is slightly easier but it costs a little more. If you just want to change the heat block then you're in the right place. First there are a few tools you'll need. Get everything ready because there are a couple of stages where you need to move relatively quickly as parts are cooling and you don't want to be hunting around for things. You will need something to undo your nozzle with. I use these nozzle spanners but you can also use the open-ended spanner that was very likely supplied with your 3D printer. A set of small allen keys, again these should be supplied with your 3D printer. A spanner that fits your heat block to hold it still. I use an adjustable as I can make it fit pretty tightly and it means I don't have to touch the hot bits as much. A pair of heat proof gloves. At times you'll have to hold some very hot parts and these avoid you getting burnt. I use these cheap leather gloves that do the job. A couple of cloths or rags, one to put on the bed and one to clean off any melted filament. You may also need a couple of other general tools like a screwdriver or some pliers depending on your hot end setup. Move your Z height up so that your nozzle is far enough from the bed that you have enough room to undo it and place one of the rags on your bed. Undo your hot end cover and move it out of the way. Heat your nozzle to your normal printing temperature, put on your gloves and then remove the silicon sock. Once your nozzle is up to temperature, give it a wipe with some rag to remove any excess filament and then remove it by holding the heat block still with your adjustable spanner. Whenever you do this, be very careful not to touch any exposed wires at the back of your heating element. This will cause a short and probably damage something. Once your nozzle is removed, push down on the collar on the top of the pneumatic fitting with a small spanner and pull the bowden tube out. We're now going to remove the hot end, unscrew the heat sink and remove the heater and thermistor. For safety, we're going to turn the printer off while we remove these, but you may find that it's difficult to remove one or all of these components once your hot end is cooled. We're therefore going to need to work quite quickly to make sure we remove the parts before the hot end cools down. This is why we have the gloves. Turn the printer off and remove the screws that hold the hot end to the x-axis carriage and then completely remove any screws that go from your heat block through to your heat sink. Hold the heat block in the jaws of your adjustable spanner and then unscrew the heat sink and heat brake as shown. Count the number of turns it takes to unscrew it or measure the distance between your heat sink and heat block first to make reassembly easier. Mine was five full turns before I could remove it. Give the threads on the heat brake a quick clean if there's any filament on them. Now fully remove the heater grub screw and the screw holding in your thermistor and remove them. If you find that either of them are stuck in cooled filament because you haven't got them out quick enough, don't be tempted to just turn the printer back on and heat everything back up without having both parts installed in your heat block. The heater should never be powered without the thermistor measuring its temperature. Firstly, it will damage the heating element, but it could also get extremely hot if unchecked. My heater wouldn't budge, so I reattached the thermistor screw and then heated everything back up again. As soon as the heater started to move, I turned the printer back off again and then removed everything. Once you have your heater and thermistor removed, then give them a quick wipe if needed, but then insert them straight into your new heat block and do up the screws. Neither of these should be particularly tight. The heater grub screw just needs to be tight enough so the heater won't slide side to side, and the thermistor screw only needs to just hold the wires. Stop tightening the thermistor screw as soon as it starts to compress the insulation on the wires. If you over tighten it, you will damage the thermistor. If needed, clean anything off the threads of your heat brake with a wire brush before screwing it into the top of your heat block. Remember to count the number of turns as you screw it in to make sure that the heat block is the right distance from the heat sink. Once you're happy that your heat block is in the right place, then reinsert any screws that go from your heat block into your heat sink. Again, these don't need to be tight, they're just there to align the heat block while you're changing nozzles. Some hot ends don't have them at all and they work fine. Before attaching your hot end, screw in a nozzle by hand. If it doesn't screw in easily, then clean the threads on the nozzle or maybe consider even fitting a new one. The main reason why threads in the heat block go is over tightening the nozzle, but they can also be damaged by screwing a nozzle in that has a lot of filament on the threads. Screw the nozzle in until it stops and then unscrew it approximately three quarters of a turn. This will ensure we can fit the Bowden tube correctly. If the end of your Bowden tube is dirty or not cut square, sort this now before pushing the Bowden tube through the pneumatic fitting until it touches the back of the nozzle. Give it a good firm push to make sure it's home. Attach your hot end, holding it square while you tighten the bolts. Now tighten that nozzle that final three quarters of a turn. This ensures that the tube is pressed hard up to the back of the nozzle and there's no movement in your Bowden tube which could cause you issues. If you want a better explanation of this then check out my hot end cleaning and Bowden upgrade videos linked in the description where I go into a bit more detail. Reattach your silicon sock and hot end cover and you're nearly done. Just remember to check your Z offset as it could be a little different now we've replaced some parts. You shouldn't have to tram your bed or create a new bed mesh though. If you want to see that hot end cleaning video then click here 
or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.